Do I have everybody's attention now? So hey guys, welcome to today's rants video. I just wanted to put out this little disclaimer before we get started on today's video. Today's video is, of course, on CM Punk. And I want to say this now before I get into the video. Everything expressed in this video is my opinion. Everything expressed in this video I do not apologize for. And if anybody gets offended, well, I guess you were meant to get offended, you know? As far as CM Punk goes, he may be a touchy subject to a lot of people in the wrestling community and a lot of people outside it, but I'm not going to apologize for anything I say in this video. Thank you for listening to this. I am sitting cross-legged on purpose. That's what I get for being a CM Punk fan. And that's what I want to make clear with this video. I am a CM Punk fan. I am a very big fan of CM Punk. I followed him from before he even got into the WWE. The first time I watched him was back when the UK had something called the Wrestling Channel. We're going back a good 11 years. Um, they showed an episode of TNA Wrestling at the time, which was a weekly pay-per-view. And there was this six-man tag, Raven, Julio De Niro, and a guy by the name of CM Punk. In a six-man tag that went to a no contest, if I remember correctly. And because the Wrestling Channel had this thing of if there's something too outrageous to be on TV, they just completely blur the whole screen. Well, Punk and Raven both got hung by the neck and kept getting raised in the air and they completely blurred the screen. And that was my first exposure to CM Punk. The second time I saw him was he got to the finals of the Ring of Honor Pure Wrestling title tournament against AJ Styles, which he lost. And from then on, I was hooked as a fan. And I followed him all the way until he dropped the ROH title for the last time and then made his debut on ECW. I don't have access to OVW or any of the feeder leagues from WWE. Unless you count NXT nowadays, but you don't really see that as developmental. You see that as a full-time brand now, which is sorely missing CM Punk because they're in the amount of talent they have on it. Um, but so yeah, he floundered in ECW for a bit until then he won the ECW title after Paul Heyman left from John Morrison and then he goes over to Raw, wins the world title goes over to Smackdown, wins the world title I'm trying not to leave anything out at the minute um, but the major points in his career he won the world title on Raw from Edge, cashing in money in the bank he won the world title on Smackdown from Jeff Hardy, cashing in money in the bank had an amazing feud with The Undertaker where he had an amazing match at Hell in a Cell and kind of got pushed down to the mid card again and it always came across to me that Punk was fighting roadblock after roadblock, which is a basically a direct quote from his DVD, which I suggest all of you watch. It's still on the WWE Network. Amazing, I know. Um, and it seemed like he was as talented as he was. He was always the B player. And it's not his fault. He's a phenomenal talent. The only problem is he's far too outspoken and far too I will not kiss your ass to have ever been given a longer title reign than he was actually given. I mean, forget the 400 and something days that he was WWE Champion where he lost it to The Rock. And I understand why they ended it with the People's Elbow before anybody starts that. Um, he was not very well liked by the writers for his tendency to tell them to go fuck themselves, which is what he did. And then, if what Punk says is true, then what happened at the Royal Rumble last year was a travesty and he was right for walking out. But my next point is where we get into that. Punk left the WWE in January or February of last year and a lot of his fans stayed hoping 
hoping that this was another case of where they get the payback. It's in the in Chicago, and CM Punk comes out to a massive pop, and it's just business as usual. Well, it didn't happen, and for that very reason, a lot of people were confused and everything. And since he left, Punk didn't talk about it. He did not talk about it to anybody who asked. He pretty much detached himself from wrestling. And then when it came down to it, he went on podcast with Colt Cabana, which is now legendary. I mean, if you haven't listened to it yet, I suggest you go listen to it when it's available. He went on Colt Cabana's podcast and completely spilled his guts about the whole ordeal, or his side of it. Because as this went on, as this whole situation has arisen, and Punk talks more and more about it, it seems like he embellishes some details and he did it to for his own personal ego and well-being he does have a massive ego that's what people don't understand about CM Punk he has a massive ego and sometimes rightly so and he went on this podcast claiming that he created the shield which everybody besides CM Punk has denied and that pretty much proves that CM Punk did not create the shield it was the brainchild of someone else he claimed that Ryback told him to his face that he was dumb as fuck or CM Punk made Ryback say that he was dumb as fuck and Ryback has never had a bad thing to say about CM Punk in interviews he never has he has not called Punk an asshole or whatever he just got on with it and he always thought Punk treated him cordially. And to, to, his, um, to his credit, Ryback has handled this a hell of a lot better than Punk has. Ryback, yes, he is a stiff worker. Yes, he has hurt people before. But I still don't think that he'd go up and say, I'm dumb as fuck, just because a main eventer told you to say it. And Ryback is obviously doing pretty well for himself now. He captured the IC title at Elimination Chamber the other night. And more and more that Punk says stuff and everything, it just seems more apparent to me that he's very bitter about how things ended. And I say this as a CM Punk fan. Punk is proving that Somewhere on the inside, he is a tad bitter over how everything ended up. I mean, every time he goes on an interview, because I know he signed with the UFC. It's like, that's plain as day. They could not have made a bigger, bigger announcement about it. It seems every time there's a WWE pay-per-view on, CM Punk is tweeting. And it seems like attention-seeking in my view. I mean, you guys may have a different view, but as I said at the top of this video, I don't care. I'm gonna state my opinion. And if nobody likes it, well, you're meant to be offended. Um, Punk tweets during WWE pay-per-views. That seems like a set attention seeking to me. The one thing I will agree with him on though is that Triple H obviously doesn't like him. Triple H went on Stone Cold's podcast on the WWE Network and I'm thinking he gave a company standard response when Stone Cold asked him about CM Punk. Company standard response. I think Vince's response was genuine. As much as Punk likes to say, don't do it on a podcast, come to my face. I think Vince's reaction was genuine. Triple H, on the other hand, I think... He was just being a company man and giving the company answer, trying to open the doors if Punk wants to come back, even though Triple H would probably be upset about that. And Stephanie as well. I mean, Punk's departure has caused a lot more problems for the company. I mean, there's a big lawsuit going on at the moment because of that podcast. The doctor from WWE is suing Punk and Colt Cabana. AJ Lee is left because of that lawsuit to be with a husband and possibly start a family. Which, uh, to be honest, I will give Punk all the credit in the world for if that's what he wants to do with his life. I'm giving him all the credit in the world 
for going to UFC when he has no fight experience. And if only to watch him get his ass kicked, I mean, that, that, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. But for one reason or another, the crossover fans, CM Punk's wrestling fans, and UFC fans who just want to see him get his head kicked in, they will all be watching his debut fight. And I'm sorry, Power Ranger fans, and I'm with you on this, it's not going to be Jason David Frank. As much as JDF pines for that fight, JDF is not going to be signed to a one-match deal with UFC just for a fight with CM Punk, because CM Punk is pretty much denied the challenge. And because he did an interview at um, a Chicago Con, uh, C2E2, I believe, and he practically said that JDF is just stalking him and should shut up, and JDF continues going after Punk for this fight. And whether it happens or not, is up in the air. It could happen, more than likely not going to happen, because Punk has been denying the challenge. And basically saying, leave me alone, you're stalking me. And JDF's been like, well, you're someone with no mixed martial arts experience, and I'm someone with a lot of years of mixed martial arts experience, and yet you're the one getting the contract. Which, to be honest, is a fair point, but Punk's star power far outshines JDF as upset about that as I am, because I'm a Power Rangers fan as well as a wrestling fan and MMA fan. And Punk is worth the deal. I mean, a lot of people said the same thing about Brock Lesnar. Brock was worth the deal because he was a legit beast, and he actually excelled in the UFC until it almost killed him, and which obviously attributed to his decision to stay with the WWE for the next two years. And if, any, and if WrestleMania is anything to go by, then Brock Lesnar will be doing well for the next two years on his deal. And it seems like he's being more lenient with the dates on his deal to suit him. But anyways, back to CM Punk. Um, he, um, whether he does well in the UFC or not is up in the air. People are still going to buy his fight and they're going to watch it for either to see him, see if he can actually go in the UFC or if he's going to get his ass kicked. But the one guarantee I can give you right now is never say never. But it's unlikely he will return to the WWE if his UFC career doesn't pan out. But stranger things have happened. Everybody said that about Brock Lesnar. I mean, he, he hated the wrestling business when he left it. And then he went back. And it seems like he's starting to love it again. So, let's not say that the same can't be said for Punk. If Punk wants to come back, he will come back. And he will be the biggest super superstar in wrestling from doing it. I mean, if he is the biggest superstar in wrestling without actually having been in it even if it was just for those two months where he was causing a stir with that podcast, then he's going to be huge if he ever comes back. But for now, don't count on it. Have you seen how many times CM Punk has changed his hair and his beard? I mean, is he experiencing beard rage or something? <sighs> I'll be completely honest with you guys. My original gripe with Punk when he left was because I thought the WWE desperately needed him and he walked out and then he had the story where he was fired and everything I'm not going to get into that because I wasn't there at speculation and put my hands up and say that I don't know what happened there but my main gripe with Punk at the start was the fact that I was a selfish CM Punk fan as a lot of people were and we just wanted him on TV doing the best that he could and being the guy along with Daniel Bryan I mean that tag team CM Punk and Daniel Bryan was just getting off to a rousing start and then Punk leaves because of the Royal Rumble that was my initial gripe I mean over time I started to respect the fact that he did not want to be in the wrestling business anymore and but as I said during the whole course of this video was I my gripe with him started to become how he was seemingly attention seeking I mean if he didn't give that much of a shit about the wrestling business he wouldn't be tweeting during WWE views he wouldn't 
he wouldn't tweet the owner of PWG or whoever signed Johnny Gargano and Samoa Joe for that week and say that I want to replace Johnny with CM Punk if CM Punk's willing and CM Punk said, where do I sign? Or Punk wouldn't um, message Hideo Itami or message the Young Bucks on a regular basis talking about wrestling if he didn't give a shit about the wrestling business. He wouldn't do that. If he didn't care about wrestling, he wouldn't talk wrestling with his wrestling friends. That's, that's my view. I don't apologise for it. That's just my personal view. For the future, I would like to see the WWE extend the hand of friendship and willingly accept CM Punk with open arms again. And for him to come back and be wrestler extraordinaire, especially as WWE is changing into the land of the wrestlers now. Well, I say WWE, I say, I mean NXT. Um, NXT, the roster is stacked from top to bottom and it seems like CM Punk is missing. And that's sad, really. But in the future, I would like to see the hand of friendship and offer to come back extended to CM Punk and for him to join the plethora of wrestlers that WWE has. But as I said, at, the, at some point during this video was, right now it's not feasible and it's not expected and it's definitely unlikely. And Punk said himself on the podcast, it's way too early. It's way too fucking early to expect him to go back when there's too much bad blood. But never say never, he will, he may find his passion for wrestling again. He may want to come back. He may want to ha come have one more match with Samoa Joe in the WWE. But it will be on his terms. Nobody else's. Because he has never worked well with authority. But until that day comes, I will always remember what Punk did for the wrestling business. He turned it on its head for a little bit until they decided to go back to John Cena. This is not a John Cena bashing video before anybody starts bashing him. Lately, he has played his part to perfection and at, even as a non-fan of John Cena, I can't physically hate him at the minute. Punk changed the business while he was in the business. Punk changed the business without even being there. The business is changing without him, but Punk will change the face of the UFC whether he wins his first fight or he gets his ass absolutely handed to him. Punk is a very polarizing figure, you either love him or you hate him. He's very Marmite in life. And it doesn't matter what the future holds for CM Punk, he will knock it out of the park. I just wish that it didn't seem like he was complaining every now and again. It, it, it seems like he complains a lot and that's sad for somebody I respect. I respect him a hell of a lot. This video is not bashing CM Punk, this is bashing some of the things he's done. And yeah, it takes a big set of brass balls to say you hate the way things are and you want to change them. But you've got to have the balls to change them. I'm not one of those people who's going to say that CM Punk can't change the WWE from his couch. Because for the moment, he doesn't give a shit about changing the WWE because it's changing without him. And, but in the future, he may care again. He may come back. And him and Triple H might patch things up. Cross your fingers. And, you know, things might all be well in CM Punk's world again. They're certainly well at the minute. He's got an amazing wife and he's got an amazing career coming up in the UFC if... He doesn't get completely murdered in his first fight. But that's my view on CM Punk, guys. I mean, I don't want to dawdle about this subject for too long because it annoys people. But as I said at the top of this video, I don't care. This is my opinion. And if you're offended, uh, I'm not sorry. Thanks, guys, for watching this new rants video. I have been woofy. I've done some very CM Punk-esque things with this video. Peace out. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and everything, and if you could for a moment to check out my other videos on my channel, and if you haven't already, subscribe and keep it here for Deadbolt Dragons. Peace.